My father and my mother split when I was about four. I put a spell on you. And I was brought up by an auntie. Just remember all I have done for you. You would be in a children's home. When I was 16, I had met with my mother. Because of mine. She will hurt you. You're going nowhere. <laughs> What's up? The guitar's all right for a hobby, but you'll never make a living at it. I called a friend of mine just before we started shooting, who's an actor, and I just said, um, you know, what, what do I do? <laughs> and he just said, look, just go on set and look like you know everything, even if you don't. Just look like you know the answer to everything. And um, and that's what I did, really. And then behaving like that makes you actually start to feel like that. Luckily, the first few days were so intensely technical. We were doing the scenes on top of the roof of the bus and, and shooting that through um, Liverpool. That actually, I could hide behind that and just sort of, you know, relax into my role a little bit. When I read this script, it was a total sort of guttural instinct. If I've got to make this film, I'm going to make this film. Throw in on top that it's uh, about John Lennon, then, you know, it was sort of, it kind of sealed it in, in a way. I'm John. Oh, want a beer? Oh, I'd love a tea. Is there any tea left, please? There's no tea left, John. No, didn't think so. Working with youth, which can be rather daunting, um, but it was great just to have so all that enthusiasm and all that sort of young... I like young boys, she says, innocently. <laughs> but it is, you know, it's fun working with, with really young people. It's just, you know, because they, you know, they think they're going to change the world. <laughs> I'm going to start a rock and roll group. You like Elvis? He came in about eighth or ninth in the casting process, and uh, he came through the door. He was talking to himself with a Liverpudlian accent. He wouldn't look at me, he wouldn't engage at all. And um, he was just totally focused on projecting Lennon. I spent a long time uh, looking at at 1950s and the rock and roll the era was a very important um, aspect of, of, of the film. We spent about two months before we started filming of just collaborating in, in rehearsals and comparing notes and then I'd watch a lot of earlier sort of footage in which I'd get his sort of body language and uh, his maybe mannerisms and things and then I'd find little details that when he used to sort of read on his bed, you know, he'd have his feet up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> then you'd want to find little details in, in, in what maybe he was like with his mother, how he was with his auntie, how he would be with his friends. You've been picked to be in my band. <laughs> A band, John. But I don't know how to play anything. Me neither. It's a skiffle band, you don't have to know. What's important is I've chosen you. And we're going to be great. The thing I kept reiterating was we're not doing an impersonation. And, I, you know, yes, character traits and um, details, but we're not doing an impersonation. This isn't going to be stars in their eyes, you know. It's, it's got to be an embodiment of the sort of spirit and soul of him. And, um, and we worked, you know, together really hard on that because, you know, it, it would have been easy to have sort of fallen into the trap too much of trying to just mimic. And, um, yeah, no, he absolutely pulled that off brilliantly. And also being able to master an accent and bear that weight and learn how to sing and learn how to play guitar. It was a lot for one person to pull off. It's just three chords. That's rock and roll, it's simple. You have to be simple to like it. Oh, funny, well done. Your sarcasm worries me. What not up to your high standards? It's not exactly Bach though, is it? Kristen's fantastic, I mean she, she plays with the fact that she knows people are terrified of her. So when she first um, came on set and, and knowing that I was going to be nervous and knowing it was my first film, she definitely played with me. And, um, you know, and she was a challenge at first. Just remember all I have done for you. Without me, you would be in a children's home. Just remember that. Like you'll ever let me forget. That hurt. Good. And I was also quite um, adamant that Aunt Mimi was... Um, that, the person that we project, you know, because she's often sort of written as a sort of, you know, what, dragon, and I, and I didn't want her to just be this two-dimensional character. I was a little bit nervous about the character because I thought that perhaps she'd be a little bit um, too kind of mean and evil. But I talked to them a lot about that and said, please, let's not make her, you know, a bad person um, just because she's trying to be... 
she's, she's sort of upwardly, she's ambitious socially, doesn't mean to say that she's a bad person. Let's make her a good person. And um, so that was the challenge, really, putting that into the, into, the, into the character. And I just tried to make her as human as possible and as real as possible. And I was lucky enough to have quite a lot of references because there's a bit of footage on her and there are quite, you know, she's spoken about and, um, you know, he spoke about her quite a lot. And um, this is wonderful interview that she did, she did with the BBC just after he died. Um, and she was the most fantastic woman. Bangs out a solid tune. It's guaranteed not to split. Coming in at a very good price. And what's very good about it? Well, it's eight pounds and four shillings. Oh, that's not very good, is it, John? Borderline mediocre, if you ask me. Very good would be... Seven pounds cash. Oh, that's very good. With Julia, we knew we wanted everything to be quite as exuberant and colourful and, and bright and the sort of breath of fresh air in, in John's life. <laughs> Yeah, you know, she influenced the music uh, and uh, taught him how to play banjo and, and really sort of gave him his voice to his art form, really. Arm, horizontal from the elbow, strum from the wrist. Think Bo Diddley. Strum from the wrist. John, be serious, or I'll phone Mimi myself. Life was exciting, you know, he was young, optimistic, and there was this wonderful new found love in his life. And so I wanted everything to have that sort of sparkle to it. In my car, Do you know what it means? Rock and roll. Sex. That's what the sort of film's about, you know, he's drawn between these two women and it's a, a, a love triangle in which um, he's fighting, fighting for his mother um, to love him, really. Me and Mum have had a bit of a heart-to-heart. -heart. Yeah, she said you stole me. Your mother walked out. You chose to take my son. There was a, an early draft, which was the draft I read, where it sort of started at birth and, and dropping bombs and all of that, but um, I knew I didn't want to go down that road because it made it too sort of big and biopic. So, yeah, we decided to just really focus on those years and, and just look at the sort of emotional turmoil that he was brought up with. We knew we were going to always cut off uh, the Beatles and never mention them, and, and we kind of flirt with it a little bit, and that was fun. <laughs> I'm off to Hamburg. And is this with a new group? They were, oh, what are they called again? DK. Oh, they all sound the same to me. <laughs> it was also really challenging. They were all so nervous because when we do the, you know, the big performances and, and dialogue scenes within that, you know, there were actors um, who weren't musicians having to play, you know, as some of, you know, the greatest musicians. And then there were musicians having to act. And, and so they were all really tense and they were my least favorite days of filming. You know, they were all terrified, but uh, that energy also and nerves was quite good to reflect the scenes of how nervous they probably were when they did those early concerts. Music definitely, um, you know, sort of draws me and, um, you know, a lot of my work, my artwork as well, um, has a lot of music focus too. So I don't know, maybe that's partly why I was drawn to the script as well, because also um, knowing that it was, you know, the breakthrough of rock and roll and that that would play a significant part as a character in itself in the film too. In spite of the fact that it was very delicate and, and sometimes um, delicate, but at the same time really searing emotional things to play. There was a great deal of gentleness and tenderness in the way she directed us. John, your little friend's here. It's my body, Holly, look. You see a, a, a journey of a boy growing into a young man and, uh, and seeing that sort of progression with his auntie and his mother and with his music. To be honest, you, you almost forget that it's Lennon. It's mixed with all that emotional turbulence set against the excitement of new music, of rock and roll. I think, you know, you underestimate the power of, of that excitement coming into Liverpool at that time. For me, it's not a rock biopic. It's, um, it's the story of some, you know, troubled childhood and emotional journey of somebody that just happens to go on to become John Lennon.